สวัสดีครับ Thank you for joining me on RCN TV. Today, Thai News Agency has the pleasure to share with you a special interview we conducted with the Indonesian Foreign Minister, Dr. Marty Natalagawa, who is here in Bangkok for the informal meeting of RCN Foreign Ministers. We caught up with Dr. Marty and asked him various questions about his life and how his experiences have shaped his world views and his approaches to Indonesian foreign policy and international relations in RCN and in the world. More in this interview with Dr. Marty Natalagawa. Okay. Uh, thank you for giving us this interview, Dr. Nat, uh, Natalagawa. Um, my first question yes. to you would be that, you know, before you become a foreign minister, you were a career diplomat, you see. Yes. And uh, what motivated you to work in foreign affairs in the first place? And how does your family feel about you having a public life? Well, uh, I think uh, this the opportunity to represent one's country and to sit behind the nameplate of one's country, it is an honor, a great honor and a great privilege. And, and, and it's, for me, it's, it's uh, something that greatly motivates me to, to represent Indonesia at whatever capacity, at whatever level. And that's the, the career uh, choice I made, was to become a diplomat. And, and that's, uh, that's how it has been. Yeah. See. And um, the Thai public is uh, very interested in how you and your wife met. And can you tell us a little bit about that? And do you come with your family to Thailand privately um, often? Oh, well, we, I met uh, Cha Sranya uh, when we were both university students in London. Uh, we, as we both studied at the LSC uh, in London. And that's how we met. And, uh, and now I do make a uh, pay visit to Bangkok now and then. but. Uh, more, to be honest, more whenever I have meetings, like the one that I'm having now, ASEAN meeting. But of course, when I'm here, uh, at every opportunity, I, I, I seek to meet my uh, family and relatives here. How was it growing up in, in England? I mean, you, you, you went there since you were very young. Um, how has growing up overseas you know, shaped your views about the world and about how the world sees Indonesia, for instance? Oh, well, uh, one impact has been to motivate me to learn uh, more about my own country so that I can best, better inform and, and, and you know, just basically tell my then student friends about what Indonesia is all about. But at the same time, uh, it is important to have uh, a more, it gives us uh, an opportunity to see, to recognize and to acknowledge how other countries see oneself. In other words, uh, it's very important to empathize and to, to, to try to understand and appreciate the, the, the other side of the, view, of the story, so to speak, yeah. So you feel um, Indonesian 100% I mean, even growing up? Yes, overseas. absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And in any case, nowadays, you know, I mean, of course, we, uh, you know, you are, you, are, you have your national ident national identity and motivation and, and and all that. But at the same time, so many of the world's uh, problems, challenges, and ills can be can only be resolved through dialogue, through cooperation, uh, because they defy national solutions. They require cooperation. Now, um, I'm going to take you back to 1993, the year yes. you gained your PhD from mm -hmm. the, the Australian uni uh, National University. Well, you, you wrote your thesis, the, Saudi, Sa the Southeast Asia Nuclear Weapon Free Zone Proposal, mm -hmm. Retrospect and Prospect. Why did you choose this topic? Well, it wasn't the most uh, popular topic then, uh, I must assure, um, I, I recall. But I thought um, it could be policy relevant, because at the time I remember uh, our country, our region then, uh, Southeast Asia, ASEAN, was uh, working on that uh, on that issue, and 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 uh, soon enough, it was it's good that uh, following the kind of research that I did, uh, soon enough, of course, the treaty was adopted in Bangkok as well, the the uh, the treaty on on Southeast Asia nuclear weapon free zone, but uh, no, I'm 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 I like the idea of this. What, I, what motivates me is uh, uh, peace building, creating peace and, and avoiding conflict. I, it's just my fault, I mean my, my, my shortcoming in a sense, I guess. Because uh, I, I don't really like uh, conflict and, and tensions and, and all that. I think, uh, I, I, am, I truly believe that uh, nothing is impossible to solve through negotiation and through, through power of persuasion. 
and 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 uh, whether it be in the area of disarmament, nuclear disarmament, or border issues, conflict situations, uh, you know, I, I believe in in the, in the power of the common good. And that that era, you know, mm -hmm. you're talking about peace and all that. I mean, you obviously grow up. Uh, to, that, that was the end of the Cold War, yeah. the, the transformation period. How has this region changed since then? Oh, a lot, and a lot for the better, especially my country. Indonesia has changed a lot. Uh, I remember when I was a student in London, and even as a young boy, uh, 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 12, 13 years old, uh, and, and I joined various uh, human rights uh, uh, groups campaigning for release of political prisoners all over the world except in my own country. Because at the time, of course, Indonesia was a totally different country in terms of a, a very authoritarian state, and you can get into real trouble if you were uh, uh, to, to voice that kind of view. But um, my, my, uh, my uh, experience overseas in London uh, has a very uh, character-shaping uh, impact in terms of my, my, my outlook. And, and, and my belief in, in, in democracy and in what is decent, yeah. I mean, you, you seem very academic and professorial. Do you have like a favorite book, uh, perhaps a, a, fic, fic, a non fiction? To be honest, to be honest, over the past so many years now, I have basically stopped actually reading books. I just read documents. <laughs> I'm afraid I just read documents, government official documents and the like. I would like to think that one day I can resort back to, to pursuing that particular kind of, uh, of uh, uh, activities. But at the moment, I'm so preoccupied with my present responsibilities. Uh, and and, and it's, it's, uh, the, the one thing that really drives me and gives me a great deal of, of, of uh, appreciation is that when you have this responsibility on your shoulder, in, in my case as Foreign Minister of Indonesia, you have the capacity to make a difference. And, 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 and that is the one that I, I really uh, cherish and appreciate most. And, and it's such a precious time that you have, and you want to make the maximum impact. I don't want to, at the end of my term, whenever it is, and then to think back, what did I do? And can only cite back conferences that I attend, meetings that I went to. Uh, I want to be more than that. I want to say, before it was thus, and now it is thus, in, in a better way. And, and, and I think all of us, in whatever capacity one finds itself, himself or herself in, uh, must always be looking for uh, you know, opportunity to make a difference. Yeah. Making a difference. You, do you see yourself as a political activist, perhaps? Uh, do you, is, is there a role model? Uh, that you, you oh, well, I mean, uh, role model, I, I don't want to burden anyone in, uh, by, by, by designating them as a particular role model. But, you know, I mean, it's, I can't think of one, one particular figure. But uh, as I said, it's more the qualities and character characteristics that I always find, uh, you know, that appealing notion of uh, avoidance of conflict, peaceful resolution of, of issues. Uh, and, and the like. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you, you always uh, reiterate the idea of um, the so-called dynamic equilibrium Absolutely. among states, yeah. you know, maintaining this dynamic equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Isn't that just uh, a resurrection of the spirit of Bandung, 1955? Uh, in a way, almost. Uh, in a way, because, not quite, because Bandung principles uh, was more on the uh, non-aligned, uh, in the sense that uh, we have then, of course, a world that was divided between east and west, and then and then and and then how countries like Indonesia navigate uh, that reality uh, by choosing not to ally oneself to one of the other camps. Uh, but now the world of today is far more complex. You do not have a east and a west to navigate through. Uh, rather, you have a complex, uh, uh, you know, multi-dimensional simultaneous interrelated issues that we must try to contend with mm -hmm. and when we speak of uh, dynamic equilibrium among other things it is uh, an expression of uh, rejection of balance of power mm -hmm. containment policies as if the rise of one must be contained must be seen as being a challenge 
but rather I think there's space for common security, common prosperity, common stability, and, and, and for a more win-win, mutually reinforcing, mutually, mutual interest rather than a zero-sum relationship. Mm, so a world connected through soft power, perhaps? Absolutely. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Soft power is, is uh, uh, one dimension uh, that I think has been somewhat often uh, unappreciated in international relations because uh, soft power, uh, soft diplomacy, persuasion, the power of persuasion can, can be very instructive, can be very, very, very powerful as well. I use the term uh, waging peace, you know, in the same way that one wages war normally, we can wage peace aggressively, uh, going for to create momentum towards uh, conflict resolution, and those who are against it can be seen to be uh, really put on the spot. Yeah. Do you think ASEAN have a, a, a mandate to exercise its soft power more in, in the world, perhaps, in international uh, affairs? Yeah, I, I think uh, if there is uh, an element, uh, a quality that ASEAN possesses, it would be, among others, in the soft uh, power, uh, because we have, of course, robust, strong economy, but at the same time, it is uh, the quality of, our, uh, of what we are all are about uh, in terms of a uh, group of countries that we can really project that soft power potential. Mm. Okay, we've been hearing a, a lot of things about ASEAN this year, including um, Timor-Leste, yes. uh, perhaps joining, mm -hmm. um, the participation of US and Russia, the, the expansion perhaps of relation in the EAS, uh, mm -hmm. in the East Asia Summit. And um, of course, uh, from all these things, uh, we want to hear from you some of the things that the Republic of Indonesia want to see happening in ASEAN mm. uh, for this year and, and beyond. Mm. And what are some of the implications you think of these new development? You know, the greater connectivity, yeah. more parties. We we have uh, we have shared with our uh, us and colleagues three priorities for this year, uh, building on the uh, achievements of previous years. Because we must remember, uh, the chairmanships of ASEAN uh, takes place for one year, uh, but uh, each new chairman must build we believe on previous gains so that we don't reinvent the wheel each time a new chairman uh, takes over. Uh, so we have three main priorities building on the past uh, gains. The first one is to ensure significant progress in ASEAN community building. We'll be, we be sure that throughout 2011 we make significant progress so that we will be on script uh, by 2015 to achieve this ASEAN community. Uh, the second aim is to ensure that we continue to maintain a peaceful and, and stable regional environment uh, that has been uh, precious that, uh, in allowing ASEAN to pursue economic development. Uh, here, of course, the East Asia Summit becomes very important because this year we, are, we admit uh, Russia and United States for the first time. So we want to be sure that the East Asia Summit becomes part of the instrument to create uh, peace and stability for our region. And the third priority along the line of our, the theme of our uh, chairmanship, ASEAN community in a global community of nations, uh, basically projecting or, or initiating the process of uh, thinking and acting as one uh, ASEAN at the global level. Uh, so not only are we a community in our region, but we are also a community that acts in cohesion or with cohesion at the global level on, on dealing with several global issues. Um, um, a lot of aspiration and hopes there, yes. but um, what are some of the challenges? I mean, I can think of a few. For yes. example, the recently there was a JBC meeting held yes. in Jakarta, yes. Thailand, Cambodia. In your view, in, in that particular conflict, mm. uh, uh, how do you see the development so far? Well, uh, challenges, of course, are abound, and, and, and all of us recognize we are not, we are, we are still, uh, you know, there's a number of things that we must overcome. Uh, but as long as we have the necessary political will, I'm sure we can overcome those challenges. But the one specific issue, the Thailand Cambodia situation, the point that must be emphasized here is that both Thailand and Cambodia, I must say this repeatedly and again and again, I feel as a chairman of ASEAN this year, uh, I see a sense and, and uh, collect uh, determination by both sides to, to resolve the problem uh, peacefully and amicably. 
uh, ideally it would be best if they can do it bilaterally but in, in, in the instance where they are not able to do it immediately bilaterally and they need ASEAN's role in creating climate conducive uh, we are there to support not to take over not to uh, to uh, overshadow not to bottleneck anyone uh, but simply to support and this is what we've been doing uh, we have had as you, you said a good uh, meeting of the JBC uh, uh, two days ago um, important to suggest that the political process is now underway again after some uh, bottleneck there uh, problems the border situation although the um, observer mission is not yet on the ground but the reality is the border situation is now far more stable than what it was last February uh, so that is uh, something for us to be to be to be uh, grateful for and appreciative for but uh, ASEAN Thailand Cambodia we have uh, a real obligations and responsibility now to show that uh, it is possible to solve even the most intractable problems through peaceful means I mean um, uh, you, you put it well but you know at the end of the day Kun Kasit Pirom, the foreign minister, did not attend the meeting while Ho Nam Hong did. Mm. Uh, as an, you know, a mediator, mm. um, you found this a troubling development, perhaps? Uh, not really, because I, I think I guess there was a bit of a um, misperception by the on on this issue. It was the JBC is never is not a ministerial level meeting. It is not. It is a senior officials level meeting. But at the same time, since the JBC meeting was taking place. Uh, back to back with the ministerial ASEAN Japan meeting, I had uh, suggested to the foreign ministers of Thailand and Cambodia if they were to be in Jakarta during that duration of that time, it would be fantastic. Then we can have additional consultations. And it happens that uh, Minister Hong Ram Hong was able to be in Jakarta earlier than uh, Minister Kasit, who arrived as well on the, on the Saturday uh, yesterday. And, and so uh, we have had uh, good discussions. Uh, you know, nowadays, uh, discussions and communications does not have to be uh, brick and mortar under one's in one roof. Uh, I can have consultations, communications, dialogue in other ways and means, as long as the result is. It's not, diplomacy is not an event. It is a process. And, and nowadays, I know, and, uh, with the pressure of 24-7, new cycle sometimes uh, uh, there is a tendency not for statemanship rather for stagemanship mm -hmm. uh, i'm not that attracted by the idea of just having a big fanfare for the sake of having nice pictures but i'm more interested in getting things done and if i if i just hang on to that uh, vision then i think as i said uh, since february we have reasons to be to be to be you know, to be appreciative that there have been important developments. Mm. Border situation is not as as negative as it was before. It used to be exchanges of fires, artillery. Now they are exchanging arguments uh, in diplomatic setting. Mm. That's far better. However long it takes, far better than than exchanging uh, artillery fire. Is there a timeline uh, uh, for no, server I'm, to be on the ground? I, I, I think uh, you yeah. know, I mean timeline or timeline. There would be, I guess, one day when, when the, the terms of reference is agreed. Mm -hmm. It is basically, to my, in my view, uh, basically done except the so-called area of coverage mm -hmm. where the observers will be stationed or assigned. It is a very technical issue, but it just shows the, uh, the challenge in, in the comfort level that even this very technical issue is, is uh, holding back uh, consensus. But I'm not pessimistic. Again, I, I'm sure we can find a way out uh, out of this situation. Uh, but the big picture is, again, uh, uh, border situation is stable. Political process is underway, far better than what it was. But we would like to make this irreversible. We would like to lock this in so that we, we continue this positive trend. Okay, going, uh, moving away from that topic now, you're talking about diplomacy as a process, mm. and you talk about, you know, stagemen, you don't mm. like the stagemanship mm. of, 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 of diplomacy, mm. you don't want to like to do things to it, mm. with its own uh, showmanship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how are we looking for 2015? I mean, there must be a lot of works ahead. Yeah. Um, 
you know, the Thai Cambodian conflict is one thing. There's, you know, Aisha yeah. uh, uh, failing as a, yes. or, you know, um, uh, being highlighted by numerous other observer, international independent observer as not, not doing well. The recent democratic transition mm. in Myanmar, um, which a lot of people around the world are still seeing as a, as a, as a scam. Mm. What are some, how, how would you address these challenges? Not only as ASEAN chair for mm. this year, but yeah, um, this, yeah. we're talking about diplomacy in the long term. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, See, community as capital C, ASEAN community with capital C, uh, may be legislated. You can, you can have declarations that says, come 2015, we will have this ASEAN community with capital C uh, by sheer legislative declarative act. But cap uh, community with a small C as a sense as a feeling, as a we feeling, as a sense of togetherness, you cannot uh, create that overnight. Yes. It cannot be imposed top uh, down. It must be a grassroots, it must be people driven. And here I think is the challenge for ASEAN uh, leaders, ASEAN le uh, officials and ministers, how we can make ASEAN a bit, little bit more down to earth and a, bit, a little bit more real in terms of its contribution and impact to the old so-called ordinary ASEAN citizens. Mm. And therefore, we must, as we look at 2015, we must look at oh, those areas where, where uh, uh, corporations are really meaningful in terms of ordinary people's uh, daily activities. See, so you want to make ASEAN as a people-centered organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in your remaining years as yes. the Indonesian foreign minister, mm. Um, what are some other things uh, you want to achieve in realm of um, foreign policy for the Republic of Indonesia no, yeah. uh, beyond ASEAN? Indonesia is not an, a small country by any means in terms of fourth largest country in terms of population in the world, third largest democracy in the world, and uh, uh, an example of how uh, democracy and Islam, because we, are the large, we have the largest Muslim population in the world, not an Islamic state, the largest Muslim population in the world, and modernity, all three can go hand in hand. Mm. Uh, so we have aspirations, we have views and values to project beyond ASEAN. But we do so in a very, uh, we hope to have to play a constructive role in our foreign policy. We wish to be bridge builder, we wish to be problem solver, not problem maker. Uh, and, and, and that is how we, we present ourselves. Uh, in a modest way, in a humble way, but always part of the equation for solving problems rather than creating ones. But uh, it will be a big uh, challenge for us. We are operating uh, in a very complex and dynamic uh, global situation. That is why it is important for countries like Thailand, uh, with whom Indonesia enjoys very close uh, bilateral cordial relations, uh, and Indonesia, we work very closely together bilaterally within ASEAN and within globally within the UN as well. Every time I hear you speak, um, it's always echo that spirit of Bandung in my, my head for some <laughs> thank reason. You. Thank um, you. Um, yeah. uh, this is your last question. Yes. Um, what is your aspiration then? Uh, is there a future aspiration? Would your family happy with uh, you know living in a public life so far? I'm, I'm done as far as public life is concerned now. I think this is, I've. I am, uh, as you rightly said, uh, by profession, uh, a diplomat, a career diplomat. Uh, for me to have this opportunity to serve as foreign minister, uh, it is a huge uh, honor, huge privilege. Uh, there is at the same time a humbling one. Uh, I'm humbled because I know my own limitations and I have my own internal self-control and mechanism. And as soon as I know that the job is beyond me, I will be the first one to fly the flag to say someone else better do the job. Uh, but while I have this responsibility, I will do it to the best of my ability. But I hope to have a, a post foreign minister life afterward. And in a way that is in keeping with my outlook in life, as I said before, uh, my fault, my DNA is uh, I'm a problem solver and I hate frictions. As in secretariat perhaps? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank well, you. Um, thank you very much for giving us this interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.